eating together. Share, eat, learn, act. Sharing stories about food and society. Explaining and inspiring actions to support and improve food systems. This is Purcell and the Vegetable. As you can see, it's a green leafy vegetable. It's a succulent. And it's a quite fatty vegetable as vegetables go. It's the green, leafy green that's highest in omega-3 oils. And you can also see, especially in this variety that's been growing in really hot weather, it has red stems, it's green leaves, and you can't see the flowers open right now, but this is a flower and they're yellow flowers. So one of the things that nutritionists are excited about with purslin is that you get the benefits of the green, red, and yellow vegetables in terms of phytonutrients. This is a stem of purslin growing in the garden. You can see one big piece here, you can see another under here. Purslin is probably pretty familiar because it grows just about everywhere. In North America, it's an escaped garden plant, a feral vegetable. It was originally grown in gardens. You can see it here. And it's largely considered a weed. So here's a piece of it that you can see growing through the fence. It grows in this kind of splayed out hand pattern, and it often grows quite low to the ground. I'm just going to show you a couple others because you often see it growing in the grass. And it has some close lookalikes. We'll take some footage at the Hamlin Garden. Spurge is one that is not edible. But generally, if you see something that looks like this, that has the red stem and these kind of fleshy leaves coming close to the leaves, at the bottom of the leaf, focus, you can see they're shiny on one side and on the bottom they're kind of matte. You can kind of almost see the, the water sacks and they're, they have their third dimension to them. They're not just totally flat so that when you bite into them they crunch a bit. Then you know that that's purslin. You can also see, especially at this time of year in July, the characteristic seeds and flowers. They have little tiny seeds, which is part of how they got everywhere in the environment. When you eat them, they have a nice kind of fresh, crunchy, lemony taste. And people trim off the leaves and the small stems, and they also use the big stems. So when you see purslin packaged in the market, you often see it in a bundle like this. And in North America, it's relatively rare to see it sold in markets, although St. Paul Farmer's Market, it's definitely being sold this time of year. When you grow it from the garden, the first thing to do is to cut off any of the roots that are really dirty. So I often just use a scissors, and what I often do when I'm growing it, you can see that there's not much root on here. I leave the root in the garden. Similarly, any places that have scars, so here you can see this is a part of the root that's kind of scarred up. It's got dirt embedded in it. It's going to be hard to clean. And it's also pretty hard and fibrous. I would just cut those bits off. And I usually kind of go through with scissors and quickly go through and cut off all the parts I know I don't want. Because then I can save some time and not be washing stuff. I'm just going to compost. So having gone through and snipped stuff out, then part of what you are going to look for is what do you want to make out of it? So I'm going to make a salad. A classic Turkish way to eat purslin is in a salad with garlic. Um, if you eat dairy with yogurt and just kind of oil and salt, you could also do a vinaigrette. You could use it as a vegetable in a stir fry. It's a slightly mucilaginous, like okra. If you cook it in a stew, it creates a bit of a slippery texture. It's one of the classic ingredients in salsa verde with tomatillos. So if you were going to blend it all up, you'd probably just take out the hard parts, wash it, put it in parts that were easy for your blender to take. For a salad, I'm going to take some of the bits that are smaller and then chop them up. You can see here what's left after I've trimmed the purslin. Put it in the salad spinner, wash that, and then everything that's here, all of these little stems, can be chopped up 
depending on how much of a bite you want, you could have, you, know, you could leave it in sprigs if you wanted a big bite, or you could have individual sprig kind of size. I used to be picky and make pretty little packets like this, especially if I was going to pickle it, but now I just chop it all up into whatever size I need. Um, similarly, you can be super picky, pull out pieces like that leaf isn't quite as nice as the others. Um, but as long as you, you've picked relatively clean, not gone by person, you should be able to eat all of it. It is worth noting that you don't want to pick it from places in the middle of a street where it's going to have had car oil on it or places in which people are likely to have tried to pesticide it. So here you can see the pile of stuff that's left behind. And then what I often do is I'll sweep up these bits that are left behind if I want to actually propagate it somewhere because there's a lot of seeds in here. So I'm careful not to include the seeds, the weeds, but I don't want the grasses. But um, I just took the last bit that I had collected in a bowl and put it through a sieve. And you can see just how very tiny these seeds are. Camera doesn't want to focus on. So once you have the prepared purslin, the dressing is easy. You put some yogurt in a bowl. You don't have to be super precise about amounts. And you cut up some garlic. I usually like to cut up garlic by putting salt on it. And the salt helps chop it fine because it's like a bunch of little knifey blades in there. You see how it gets kind of smushed and juiced. So again, not very precise with the amounts, but you can add some oil, the so garlic and salt and oil can all get mixed in. And then the last two parts to add to it are the mint and the first one. So this is how the person looks when it's been chopped up. So here's the mint. I usually take a handful of whatever kind of mint I have growing. Often just slide it down the stem, pull off the leaves, chop those up fine. When you're cutting up herbs, it's both good to take them off the stem and also cut them across the main fibers, especially in summers that are hot without a lot of rain, vegetation, and this is good for really cutting any greens, can get pretty stringy. And it's nicer for eating if you're not having to swallow big fibrous strings. So once you make sure you get them across the leaves, you can get them chopped up to the size you want. And then you stir that up and taste to see if it's the level of dressing and the level of greens that you want. I usually add greens as I go along. So I can add more greens. Looks like that could take a bit more person. But if you wanted it more on the yogurty side, that would also be delicious. You're listening to Eating Together. Share, eat, learn, act. Find today's episode and related stories at foodfieldguides.com.